I'm here to present um, my work as a part of my PhD uh, uh, studies, which is called Gaucho. Let me give you a little background of why we wanted to build this tool. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> now you can hear me, I, I assume. Okay, perfect. So if we look at uh, the developer environment we use nowadays to code, we'll see that we, uh, for example, we, we, we have here, we're looking at the Faro, the Faro system, and we see that for navigating the, the code and for manipulating and creating programs, I can deal with a lot of different tools. These tools allow me to uh, browse um, uh, for any particular entity, and once I create it, and once I browse it, it allows me to interact and manipulate that entity and uh, treat it in the form of text. So if we look, for example, in the, uh, the browser, we see that there's a large selection area in, the, in this corner where when I finally make my selection, I'm allowed to manipulate the entity that is being selected, which is an object, in, in the form of text. In this case, this is a method. In the case I select a class, I will be able to, uh, to, to interact with the class definition. But as we see here, um, there's, some, there's somehow a mismatch between what the system allows me to interact with and what I think when I program and I model my, pro my, my, my objects. So we argue that these tools, even though they are powerful and allow me to produce um, a lot of different uh, applications, they also have uh, a shortcoming in the sense that they, they provide, um, they provide, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> they provide uh, um, a hidden, a hidden layer between and the objects. So we argue that maybe it is time to ditch this uh, way of programming and think of a novel way of interacting. Since if we look at the system, it basically hasn't changed in the 30 years since Smalltalk was uh, conceived. More or less, it may be a little buttons, more contextual menus, but the same, in, the same principles of interactions we are applying to, to code. So we argue that when this, uh, when this uh, way of uh, producing code in an object-oriented system appeared, it radically changed uh, the way people uh, program with dynamic languages. And we think and that, came, uh, that birth came in Smalltalk. And we believe that Smalltalk can be a medium for creating the next generation environment to provide a whole level, a new level of dynamism in, in our user interface. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm gonna show you what the, the tool, which I call Gaucho, which we have been building. So this is our system. It's, it's built using the Faroide, and um, it adds a couple of different, uh, and a new, um, it adds, it has a couple of additions that Faro doesn't provide. For example, the notion of a session. Whenever you're a developer and you start to work, you start working on a session. And during that session, all your changes are recorded and everything you did is, uh, is logged. And the system is aware of who is the developer performing the changes. It's similar to what we have in small talks with the file, with the change, with change systems and the init author initials. But in here we take it to a new level in the sense that we reify the session and uh, we'll see that many things can come from that. So I'll, I'll, this is my, my login, my login uh, widget. So I will start by creating a new developer. In this sense, we see that there's already a Fernando Olivero created. Let me create another one. So let me give you the name. So what this system is trying to enforce is the sense that you have direct access to all the, the entities that uh, an object-oriented system uh, provides us. For example, classes, method, packages, and, all, and, and many other objects. So let me open, let me select this developer and I'm gonna open the system, which means that I started a session, I started a developing session. In this case, this thing we don't see pretty much because we haven't worked before. So let's start by uh, looking at what the system provides. So if we see the difference here is that we're looking at the abstraction that is represent the abstraction of the system represented here in a directly manipulated way. So 
This is the system. It's telling me that it has 183 packages and one class. I'm assuming that the classes that are in package belong to the system. It's just a convention. So in this case, we can easily access and understand what the system uh, contains and what the system uh, allows me to do. So for example, let, 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 let's open a package. In this case, I'm opening the AST core package. And, and the package, again, is showing me what a package contains, which is classes. So for example, if I would, add, would want to add a class in the package, I just go and just type here and say, OK. I want to create a, a new class, which is a superclass object. And for example, it's called like this. So I quickly and easily created a class, and, I was, and I, all the time I interacted with the package and not with a tool. So whenever I had a, a class, there was a semantics there that, tell the, that the, user, the user interface was telling me that I was creating a new class in that package. And, and uh, my conception as a programmer was that I was dealing with the package and I was talking to the package. So if we apply this uniformly in all the system, how would you, how would you interact with a, with a class? So if you see if here, we're looking at the shape of a class. What, what is a class showing me? It's showing me, okay, there's an icon which shows me which kind of abstractions I'm looking at, but there are more specific ones which tell me the, the amount of attributes, the amount of methods, the amount of references this class has in the system, and for example, uh, I can open inheritance, I can watch the inheritance. And here is, is telling me the test group of this class. So what is, I would like, like to interact with a sub, with a meta class of this class. I just provide a, a flip animation in the sense that I want to look at the, another perspective of the same class. And, and of course, I can interact with it, and I can add class variables, attributes, and methods. And in no way, I'm interacting with text in this way. I, the, the only operations I'm allowed to perform are the ones that the class, or the meta class in this case, knows how to, how to answer. So let, let's, for example, create attributes in this class. I just created an attribute. This attribute is selected and it's telling me that it has both accessors which were automatically created and it has two references in, the, in this class. In the case of the both accessors that were just generated. The system has settings for customizing the behavior of all these automatic uh, functionalities. Let's create a method. The same, I always interacting with the abstraction that represents the class. So in this case, the, there's an entry field which knows that I'm going to add a method, and it's telling me, okay, please add a selector with arguments. And if you see, there's just, um, okay, there's a bug. Sorry for that. So the, the interactions are that I'm always manipulating the objects and the representation of the objects in the system are more in concordance to what I think of a, of a class when, when I'm programming, when I'm modeling. So, yes. Yes. Well, there, well yes, the point is that since this, these methods are accessors of the attribute, it, our assumption is that if you want to interact with them, you can just click and you can browse those. So what did I do just now? I, I open a group, which is the attribute references of that particular attribute in that particular class. So the system, um, the system presents this, uh, ID, this notion of groups for reifying the relationships between all the, the system elements. Yes. But if I want to have a lazy initialization based on my accessor, where is the accessor? I don't see the accessor there. I see something that mm -hmm. is written attribute references, yes. example one, methods. So This is telling me that it has two references yeah. and, and it has both accessors created. And for example, in classes that are imported with Gaucho and created with Gaucho, you could, for example, not have any accessors. And the icon will show you which get or, or setter are missing. When you click, you have the possibility of creating it. So, do, so, so my question was, how do you do a lazy initialization of hello? 
Yes. Um, well, there's a, there's a, the, you will have to create the settings where you don't create the, the auto, automatically create the accessors, and there will be a, a setting in the system. And you, you could either, if you want, it will be automatic, and you could remove them. You just, I, I don't, don't have that operation, but you will click here and remove them. For now, I only have adding it. The, all these icons are interactable. That means that you can, you can act in this case. If they show me references when you click, you, you open the group, references group. If it's an accessor icon, you create the, the accessors. And this is uniformly applied in all the system. So for example, if you look at the package, in the package, for example, let's see at RB assignment node. It showed me that it has five references. I just invoked the, the command that shows me, okay, it showed me the group, the, the references of that class. What, what I'm trying to show here is that um, whenever you look at these kind of systems, you're you're thinking about models. You're thinking about the model you're doing and not about particular selections and later um, dealing with syntactic, uh, syntactic elements or constructs. You're always dealing with the, the objects themselves. So let's look for instance, let's see how a test would be, how, how a test will be run in this kind of system. If you look at RB assignment node, we look that it has 53 tests. It references the 53 tests of this system. So this is a test group. So if you look at, some, sometimes here you have problems of overlapping is because I'm in a bitmap based bit base systems and it's, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, addressing yet issues of scalability because what I'm attempting to have with this system that is the notion of a canvas metaphor. You're not constrained by the particular layout of a tool or a particular sentence of a tool. You can use freely all the space you have available to you. In this case, you're constrained to what uh, the display is showing you. Yes. How can I see the code of a method? Okay, so, lo, le, le, for example, let's open a class. So L1. RB node. I have here, I'm looking at the class RB node here. Wait, let me tidy up a little bit the stuff. My canvas. So, uh, if I went to a particular method, I have to go and open that method. And that abstraction is going to show me the, the me this method in particular. If I want to uh, edit it, if I want to code it, what I, will like, what I will have to do is select it and perform an edit. I can al also expand the shape to be able to code uh, more comfortable. Okay. Did you try, uh, did you try uh, in place edit yes. into, uh, the, into the other browser? Uh, you say uh, here in the, in the method list, just yeah. edit it there. The problem is that um, you enter a mode there because then the, this mode will include all the other methods that you're looking at. I'm, I'm only doing that in the case that you're, you're, you, you're dealing with the initialize method because if you think about it, the initialize method is something specific to a class, to, an, to a class object. So I say that that's a specific method and I don't treat it the same as the other method, which goes into the direction that I'm dealing with abstractions. I'm not dealing with a tool that's showing me a list of methods and they are the same uh, importance. In the case of a class, I know that a class may have the initialized method. And if it's not created, I will click on the icon and create it. In this case, it's already created for me. But uh, what I'm doing now is that you have to open the method, you have to select it, and then you can code it. And what I'm not saying is that Behind all the additions, there's a change model. I'm, I'm recording using the refactoring engine uh, objects all the changes made to the system, which uh, allows me to record all the development, uh, every action that occurred in the development session. So I'm also providing a, a synchronicity between Gaucho and Faro. Suppose you, you're missing one uh, tool that you're, the, you want to use and it's not yet implemented in Faro, you can just select the method and say, okay, show him to me in Faro. And now you're in the Faro world. You, know, you see that Gaucho is, in, is uh, minimized, and you always have the possibility to reopen it. So this, uh, for now, since uh, Gaucho is not yet um, fully complete, I provide this um, possibility of coming and going from both worlds. But uh, what I wanted to show, which is that I, I couldn't make it work, was that there's also a possibility that since you're looking at your Faro desktop, you should be able to import exactly what you're looking at in your Gaucho wallet and now deal with the abstractions you're, you were coding with your tools in, in this new world and, and try it out. But uh, I, I had a bug. 
it was this, this thing where I say, okay, grab all the windows that I'm looking in my desktop and convert them into, into a gaucho of the a pandas. But we call the destruction of the, of the our canvas, of, our, of the place where we can freely manipulate and, and place the shapes, we call this the pandas, which is a metaphor for the, the grasslands of uh, South America, which denote freedom. Yes. Uh, well, actually, now uh, I'm focusing more on the um, tools for coding uh, statically, to creating classes, method packages, and showing the content between them, and also navigating between the relationships of the, of the, of the, in the system. L the other uh, part will be going to the direction of real objects, to how you would treat direct manipulate real objects, in the sense you have a standard inspector, maybe that could be different in this kind of world. But for now, no. Yes. Ah, okay. Usually we have uh, developers uh, has a frequent sequence of operations like uh, I start looking at the package and then select the class and then select a category and then and select a method and yes. then look at the code. Yes. Do you have something to automate this sequence and to repeat it to say, okay, uh, I have ju uh, just opened like a, a skeleton for a browser yes. and uh, so go through it? Uh, no, those kind of things are not yet added because uh, for now you have the basic functionality which is looking at the, presenting the system in, in this way of, of looking at it and uh, interacting with uh, all the refactors that you can do with refactoring engine. This uh, automatic finding of the nav navigating the relationships are, are not yet done. But for example, you see that in this case, I'm not, not also providing a co collapse between the modes. Okay, you have freedom to freely place your stuff, but if they overlap, then you get kind of a clutter. So they should be able to, to provide a collision detection where the things are gonna expand. But uh, th those stuff are not yet. What you have is the possibility to interact with the abstractions and, and, and also to never go be below uh, the assertion of text and you only go to that abstraction when you want to code the behavior for a method. If not, to show containment, to create particular, uh, the structure of a class, to create the structure of a package, you always deal with these uh, with this directly manipulable entities. So, for example, uh, we could try to open different groups and if I want to change the superclass of a particular class, I will go to the inheritance group. The, because this is the group that's showing me the, the inheritance change of this particular class. In this case, of a class abstraction written layout. Well, this is a method, sorry. Okay, what else can I show? Of course, the system provides a lot of different functionalities for searching. Uh, throughout the whole system, for example, I have a search widget where it's auto-completed and it, it, it automatically knows what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for a class, I will call it like this, and there's a completion, a Google-like behavior for completing. And suppose I want to look for, a, I want to import in my, my canvas, which I'm, I'm working on, a particular package. I will just type, and I have a, the results below. And now I import the package. In this case, the system allows me to search for the relevant entity, the my relevant focus point for, for working on my task in different ways. And the information is consistently presented throughout all the system in the ways of these icons that show, uh, that, that not only show the status of that particular class and is correspondent with all the rest of the system, but also allows me to go in, in, and look at that particular relationship. Yes. Can, can you redo the search? Yes. And search a package? Anyone? W what is the M, the little M that you have? Because I was thinking ah, okay. it's a P. Yes, yes, uh, there's a bug. Mm. Okay. Uh, actually, <laughs> in, the first, in the first column, in the first row, you will see packages in the second classes and in the third methods. So. Okay. Yes, it's an M. It should be a P. So there's a, there's a consistent iconic language also for telling me what I'm looking at. Because people may not understand the convention that an iPhone means a package. So that's where we help and we, we aid the system in that sense. Okay.
So if you look, for example, I, I was working on a development task. I, I'm showing you this system, and now, okay, I, I want to work on another one. What I want to do is not lose all the context that I built and the placements that I had. So I spend many hours, and I customize system exactly as I wanted to, and it will communicate what I was doing to me. I don't want to lose that placement. So suppose I quit the system. Okay, this was previously a bug there. And I, I work now as another developer. Okay, this developer may start from scratch because the developer is new, was just created. But if, but if I'm a previous developer and I, and I really work with the Gaucho system, which means that when I restart my session, I would like to start from what I, what I, what I left. So l suppose I'm again, and I open the system. The system imports every, all the context that I was working on. In this case, I, I just had a bug also that uh, for, forgets the placement. But if you look in the model, the, behind all this model, there's, there's a session object which remembers every shape that you were working on in the placement in the particular context it was. So uh, you can easily create from that context the visualization that they represented. I, I'm losing the position placements in this case. It's just a bug I couldn't fix before the demo. So all this session awareness, I, I wanted to, to, to take it in a much, yes. No, but continue, finish no. your sentence. Yeah, I, I want the session to be much more complete. I wanted to, for, ex for example, have a, a, a complete replay mode where you could communicate what you've been doing in a, a movie-style fashion. I, that will help in communicating uh, the task or what the particular duty in a coding session. And it will really help you remember what you were working on. Because sometimes you get lost with a clutter of windows. You, you open your tools and you start having 30 windows. And then you, you forget what you were doing. And you have to reconstruct all that knowledge in your head. I, I, I think that the next generation leader should present the relationships visually and should not uh, force you to remember that. Should, if you learn that the, this system is connected in a certain way, the, the, the user interface should aid you in, 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 in remembering that knowledge. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, grab on one of the box. Can you grab one of the box? No, the, yes, the, the big one. Yes. Why, d why do you always put this gray stuff? Well, because uh, I'm always, this is always flickering for me. I always lose the context of what I am carrying. Yeah. No, yes, I actually started as, as optimization, but now I could remove it. I, uh, uh -huh, okay. I started as an optimization, but then I figured that I don't need it. I have another question because if I understand correctly on a G abstraction item layout, no, don't touch it. Ah, okay. So for the attribute, the little arrow that are uh, in both sense. Yes, for example, this one. This one means, so in this, this case, is the, this is the reference to the instance. It means that it has accessor and setter and doesn't have neither of them because it's gray, both are grayed out. So if ah. I click on it, it will be automatically created. Okay, okay. imagine that that's what about. That's true. Okay. So, aha. Uh -huh. Demo effect, sorry. So, okay. We can leave with that. The, the little arrow that are like that, that look the same than the other one, but here. But uh, in these arrows, they're applied to methods. It means that they have, uh, it's, de it's, de it's, def it's defined in a superclass and it's defined in a subclass. And depending on which is grayed out, it's uh, quickly letting me know the, the inheritance or where that, where that Yes, I know, because I did some icons that Lucas never wanted for Faro, so <laughs> that show that, I can show you the, my, the one I did. And then the little, uh, um, Binoc, this is the, the senders, the implementers? Yes, this is the, the, the noting references. In this case of a method, it's a sender. So, for example, extend has a 418 senders in the system. And if because I want to browse them, I would just open the group and start building my, my graph of relationships. Okay. I have some other questions, but I keep them. Earlier when you said that the accessors are automatically created. Yes. If you click on it, you could change it, right? I did in the code. Uh, sorry? When, when the accessors are automatically created. Yes. If you click on the icon, you get the group. And well, then yeah. if you click on one of them, you can edit it or not. Well, actually, what, um, what, I, what I did is provide a, un a uniform interaction. So, 
So the only way of getting the group of references is, is clicking on the references icon, not on the create accessor icon. So. Yes. No, they are considered methods. The only problem is that there are, there are particular methods. Yes, yes, you can edit them. You can open them. So what, what I'm trying to say is that if you look at this uh, abstraction, it's showing me a class. And in the class, you know that the access, the uh, attributes may have accessors. And accessors are particular kinds of methods. So. Yes, if I want to access the accessor, I have it here. Yeah. Actually, so they are where this is being references, and they may be the accessor, so they belong to that group. If I want to log in, log in that group. Okay, I didn't show. Um, I mean, I didn't speak about the, the implementation, but uh, whenever you provide input, there's a particular uh, entry field that knows the completion that's going to be applied and knows the change that's going to be recorded uh, resulting of that addition. So that means that that's why we can log and we can understand and record everything that you did. Okay. So suppose. I want to look at how this system look at tests. So if you look at the class Gaucho, it's telling me that it's references in 66 tests. I just open the test group. So you see that quickly, since my display and my, it gets cluttered, I, I have to close the things that are distracting me. What ideally would happen is that there would be a canvas metaphor where you could freely go to the right, to the left, or whatever you want. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is really impressive. So I was just wondering, like, how how can we help you to? to make this thing well, concrete. I mean, now can, you, can I use it? Yes, uh, actually there was a first version of this system which was called 1.0, and this is the next release is gonna be uh, present in this system. Okay, so and I, I So I plan to have a, a little experiment the, during, a, a during the SOOC, and maybe you can come yeah, talk please. to me, I'll be always here then. I will please. really look forward to people to try it out. It's not as buggy as in looking at the demos because I wanted to add a couple of functionalities. But uh, my, my goal is to test it a lot and to have users and have real experiences. And soon enough, in less than one week, I'll update the new version in, in the page where you have the how to download it and how to use it. Yes. Yeah, so that's my last question. But yes, you, you replied on I think that what is really important is that you, you, you set up a real experiment. Yes. And then I'm sure that a lot of people would like to participate. And this cool. means that you should really think about what are the questions that you want to to um, to ask the people. Yes. Because maybe for me as a user, I don't really care if I manipulate text or boxes because that's your hypothesis on what I want to do. For me, mm -hmm. I want to program and fast. Yes. So maybe, for example, the in-place edit, uh, this is one little thing, I press on it, I, want the, I don't want to get another box there. Or mm. And the metaphor, this is the way you you build your system, that's not the way I understand your system. Hmm. And that can be okay, huh? because maybe, maybe you have a really nice metaphor and I'm a happy programmer. But don't try to tell me, oh, look, this is cool, you have a, a box. I don't care. I want to, <laughs> it, sh it should get into the flow and help me to program and then you will know, you will ask your user, are you happy when you do this task, this task, uh, those kinds of things. So I want to participate. Huh? What is missing is a lot of customization of the system. Like you said, it would be nice to people just, okay, I want to just uh, play with the methods when I'm looking at it. Yeah. But, 